It is potentially our last morning in Guatemala. I'm getting real excited to head to Honduras. Ever since we bought Atticus, I wanted to take her over there. It's so pretty. It's 35 feet deep right here. We're probably 20 feet from the shore. Literally, some of these trees are like above us. We gotta be careful not to let them touch the mast. Honduras is probably the worst country in the Caribbean for piracy. We decided to put on just our deck level running lights because we heard there is a little bit of piracy on the northern coast of Honduras. The only thing I'm slightly worried about is there was like a haze in the distance. But... Previously on Project Atticus. After spending a year working in Isla Mujeres, Mexico, we finally saved up enough money to start cruising again. We then set sail to Belize to explore the second largest barrier reef in the world. As summer approached, we decided to hunker down in the Rio Dulce, Guatemala, the best hurricane hole in the Caribbean, where we did a little inland exploring and hacked away at some boat projects. This is the wonderful wind scoop that you just made. Potentially our last morning in Guatemala. It's beautiful outside. I got back from uh, my trip uh, the day before yesterday, so I spent all of yesterday just provisioning. You can see the refrigerator. As many vegetables as we could, um, but all the meat stands were closed because it's Sunday, so no meat for us. And then I'm also getting our paperwork ready. So. With this little puppy, we'll be able to check out. We're thinking today we might just shoot over to Livingston and try to check out this afternoon because it looks like the weather window is pretty sweet starting about tonight around midnight. It is nice to see the bud. Nice to be back with the bud. Back with the bud. Yep, just two beds in a boat again. <laughs> moving and everything's kind of done I'm getting really excited again let the journey continue <laughs> so we are heading for Livingston which is the town at the mouth of the Rio where we checked in to Guatemala so we're heading there we're gonna check out uh, and then hopefully head up to Tres Puntas where we can anchor in preparation for going offshore tomorrow and sailing for Utila which is in the Bay Islands of Honduras here we go let's do it <laughs> Man, this is so crazy because you can literally like come up right next to the shore and it's all it's 35 feet deep right here. We're probably 20 feet from the shore and literally some of these trees are like above us. We got to be careful not to let them touch the mast at all. You'll literally hit your spreaders on trees before you'll run aground. Like Lynn and Larry parted. Okay, your passports, including the checkout for the boat Atticus, for Utila Honduras, for leaving tomorrow, 4 a.m. Okay. okay? Yeah. Very nice to meet you. <laughs> okay. Nice. All right, let's roll, buddy. Point 
seven. Got less than a foot under the keel now. Goodbye, Rio. It was fun knowing you. Thanks for the hot waterfalls. So we're crossing this line where I think water goes from salty to more brackish. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> That's super cool. It goes all the way down. Okay, y'all set, bud? Ready to go. Okay, go ahead and drop. Hey, bud. You hey, ready? Bud. Yep, we're at the yellow, so almost there. Ready to go to Honduras. All right. You feeling awake? Uh, not really. <laughs> Last night, the wind picked up and we changed directions. And then there's also all these little fishing boats that were fishing around us. So me and my paranoid state was like sleeping with my pepper gel ready to go. <laughs> um, so I didn't sleep really well. So we're getting a pre-sunrise departure. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Good news is we got wind out of the west, just like we're supposed to, mm -hmm. so. And then I'll sleep. I'll and then you'll that. sleep. All right, let's go. Six in the morning, we're well underway now, and uh, we're gonna round Trace Puntas and then head east toward the Bay Islands. Uh, we are gonna do something a little bit different um, than you would if you were just going straight to the islands, and that is because Honduras is probably one one of the worst, if not the worst country in the Caribbean for piracy. There's a lot of cruising boats every year that make the trip from the Rio Dulce, Guatemala to the Bay Islands off the coast of Honduras. Traditionally, these boats would hug the Honduran coastline, making several overnight stops at anchorages on the mainland. Beginning several years ago, piracy began to be a real problem, with several incidences involving violent boardings at sea, some of which resulted in loss of life and property. So now there are basically two accepted ways that cruisers get from the Rio to the Bay Islands. The first option is to head north into Belize, do some cruising in Belize, and then head from somewhere in Belize directly to the Bay Islands. This gets you far enough off the Honduran coastline that the odds that you would encounter pirates are extremely low. The other option is to sail directly from the Rio to the Bay Islands, but to stay far enough offshore that nobody near the coast would be able to see your vessel. And so what we're gonna do is, instead of rounding the corner and going straight for the islands, we're going to head northeast until we're about 20 miles off the Honduran coast and then we'll head east. That way, nobody from shore can see us. The other good thing that's on our side with this plan is out 20 miles out from the Honduran coast is real deep water. So I don't think there's gonna be a whole lot of fishermen out there or fishing activity. Regardless, I think we're gonna be good, um, but we are taking some precautions. One really exciting thing about this trip is the quality of the weather window that we've got. It's just perfect. And it's definitely not something that happens every day in this area, so let me show you. So here on the left you've got Belize, the Honduras is here to the south. We're leaving the Rio Dulce right here, and over here is the Bay Islands. Normally this area, all this area right here, is uh, really strong winds coming out of the east. And so it makes it very hard to sail east to get to the Bay Islands. You can see there's some stronger winds coming down. This right here is a cold front that's coming down. This is two o'clock in the afternoon tomorrow, and the strong winds still aren't anywhere near the Bay Islands. And so basically we are using the wind shift that occurs before a cold front to make our easterly. And it's just a really perfect weather window. The winds are either out of the west or as you can see here, they clock 
back out of the east again, but they're only about five knots, you know. It, it doesn't even look like they get up to 10. So we're basically gonna be uh, motor sailing for the next 24 hours. went over our watch schedule we decided to do three on three off uh, just because we're both a little bit tired and it'll be nice to kind of keep things changing every three hours so um, I am heading down to do my favorite thing on Atticus just take a nap so I got my little Lee cloth set up and our cushion here gonna hop in oh yeah oh that's good Got my audiobook listening to John Steinbeck's Cannery Row. Pretty good so far. And this will be me for the next two and a half hours. I can't see it but there is a ship way off in the distance right there and uh, looking through the binoculars it looks like we may be on a collision course so what I'm gonna do is he's bearing about 90 degrees and we're on a course of 75 and he's heading this way basically at us but I'm looking at his port side so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just course about 10 or 15 degrees so we're heading at him and as long as we're heading at him and he's going this way, we definitely won't collide. I'm still looking at its port side and it is definitely going to be passing us on our port side. So we're going port to port. But what I want to do right now is when we were going through the refit on Atticus, I installed a tri-lobe radar reflector and I had read that that is the best radar reflector that you can buy um, and supposedly it just you know shows up real bright and clear on the radar of these ships and so what I'm gonna try and do right now is I'm gonna try and hail this ship on the radio and see if I can ask them how we popped up on the radar when they were uh, still a distance off cargo vessel Chiquita, cargo vessel Chiquita. This is sailing vessel Atticus on your port side. Good morning, uh, would you like to switch over to channel 6969? Were you able to see me pretty clear on your radar screens from a distance? Yes, yes, uh, it's very clear here. Do, do you have any idea how far distant you were when you first saw the boat on the screen? Oh, I saw you around uh, eight miles. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your help. Uh, sailing vessel Atticus back to 1-6. Cool, that was awesome. Test number one, not bad. Uh, when I first saw that cargo ship, on the horizon like they were very faint and i could just barely make them out with my eyes and i got my you know binoculars out and was able to confirm it was a cargo ship so about the moment that i could see them i timed it until they were basically at our position to see how long does it take from the moment that you see a cargo ship heading towards you to the moment that you could have a collision and it was basically 20 minutes and so when you're standing a watch, that's something good to keep in mind, is that you could literally do a scan of the horizon, not see any ships, and then 20 minutes later, get nailed by a cargo ship. And so, you know, that's why if, if I'm kind of like reading or if I'm doing anything, I try and set an alarm for every 10 minutes. So that every 10 minutes, I poke my head up and do a full scan of the horizon. So good thing to keep in mind. So I'm getting finished up with my 
three hour watch and uh, Desiree's gonna be taking over. We just passed the Sapodilla Keys. You can see them to our port side. From here on out, we won't have any land masses to be concerned about. We're definitely still in uh, traffic lanes for any vessels going toward the Rio. Uh -huh. So keep a really sharp eye out for traffic. The wind should shift. If it shifts a lot and it strengthens, like let me know because then we should start sailing. Okay. As it started getting darker and I was on deck alone, I found myself constantly looking to the horizon and playing out worst case scenarios in my head about getting boarded by pirates. Every time I saw a boat in the distance, I'd get super anxious, get my binoculars out, and become obsessive about its movements. Even though I knew our strategy to stay far offshore would most likely keep us safe, that still didn't stop me from emotionally exhausting myself throughout the night in these bouts of anxiety. We decided to put on just our deck level running lights um, because we heard there is a little bit of piracy on the northern coast of Honduras, so we didn't really want to target ourselves. Um, hoping that means they can't see us because our, our lights, our deck level lights are like two feet from the water. So um, beyond that, the weather seems pretty good, which is great. <laughs> um, we're going about five knots. I see one ship way in the distance um, on our beam, a little bit forward of our beam actually. So um, I just took a bearing with my binoculars and they're at 160 so I've got my alarm clock set in 10 minutes. I'll take a look again and see if they're at 160 and then do that again in the next 10 minutes. And then if it looks like it's staying the same, I'll have to make a decision. <laughs> but right now it's just good that I identified them. So anyway, just trying to stay cool and not worry about this boat <laughs> and not think about piracy. Alright, well it is 11 o'clock, going through a little bit of a rain cloud. Luckily there's no, there's not too much of a big wind increase. It's going about four knots. Um, the only thing I'm slightly worried about is there was like a haze in the distance which looked like it might have been a cruise ship, so got to keep an eye on it. But it's actually kind of nice getting the boat clean. I was just kind of dreading getting to Utila and having to um, spray down everything, so kind of a nice shower. As long as the winds don't pick up, we're on a, a full main and motor sailing. So. Alright, well we got through that little squall line. I wouldn't even call it a squall. It was just like a little bit of rain, a little bit of increase in wind. It wasn't too bad. Um, we've got no traffic on the horizon or behind us. Um, the moon just peeked out from behind the clouds and the sky was really, really bright even though it's about midnight. And I was just in awe of just like the water glistening white from the moon. It was just so pretty. It's about 12.30 and I see land! So it's just like this like mound of darkness on the horizon. But man, I'm just having such a good watch. It's funny, when I first got on deck, um, you know, it's the middle of the night, I'm tired, got a suit up and all this crap. <laughs> uh, then you see these dark, looming clouds in the distance, and then Jordan's like, maybe you should turn the nav lights off just in case for piracy, but turn them back on, if, uh, turn the tri lights on if you see a haze, which is probably a cruise ship, so look out for that through the storm and also be prepared to reef the main and also the wind direction might change. So like there's all these factors that are just like, oh my God, this is gonna be stressful. It's just gonna just 100% suck. And then you like pierce through the bad weather and closer to Utila, so in less danger of piracy. And 
it's just freaking gorgeous and I'm just so awake from how pretty it is and calm it is and just having a freaking awesome hour at watch in the middle of the night and being happy about it. Being happy that I'm alive, happy that I'm awake, not feeling like watch is a burden, happy that Jordan is down below, passed out, you know, just looking at him, sleeping away, makes me really happy. So. right in the middle of this little rain squall. It's just kind of like light light rain, not too much wind. Um, to start motoring to Tila, you kind of have to go directly into it, so that way. Um, so I think I'm gonna give it a little bit of time, see if it passes, and then maybe try to motor. Just because we've got plenty of time, and I don't really want to get all wet. <laughs> It's overcast and it doesn't show any signs of not being overcast anytime soon um, we just got to kind of go into the pass slowly okay. and it's a deep pass so as long as you know I'll be on the bow you keep a real close eye on the depth sounder and as long as it stays deep and it the moment it even looks like it's getting shallow you'll back out I'll have you back out Cruising can be really scary. We could run into a reef, get caught in a nasty storm, be boarded by pirates. There are a ton of bad things that could happen to us. But with enough research and preparation, we believe that we can reduce our risk to a manageable level. And personally, I think it's worth doing. Because if we become overwhelmed by fear, then we'll never get to experience what's on the other side. next week on Project Atticus. All right, adventure day has begun. Let's do it. Somebody got a new swimsuit. I did. And they're looking sexalicious. Hey, well, what do you think of this spot, bud? Wow, it's super cool. It's just like lush greenery. It's so pretty. It's like the most delicious thing I've ever had in my life. <laughs> What? Get him! He went inside! He didn't fall! I didn't see him. We'll eat all of our clothes! I got some new ones! Another <laughs> Hashtag Catracha! <laughs> Hey guys, hope you enjoyed this week's episode. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to our channel by clicking here. And if you're already a huge fan of Project Atticus, consider becoming a patron right there. See you next week. <laughs>